Let's talk about the Sony 24 millimeter 1.4 GM series lens and how this thing is a complete beast, especially for something like video. I had the chance to work with this lens for two weeks. I was working on client projects where I was filming outside and inside. I had a collaboration with a fellow YouTuber, Noah Kagan, as well as using it to create my own content. Before even getting into the specifics of this review, if you're a Sony shooter, I would highly suggest at least renting this lens once. It's that good. In the beginning, of this video, I'm going to start off by explaining the physical attributes of the lens itself, and then I'm going to move on to my personal experience working with the lens on all those different projects. If you want to bounce around to a specific part, everything's going to be labeled on the timeline, in the description, in the first comment, and there's a link to the lens in the description below. And let's begin with the physical attributes on the lens. The first ring closest to you allows you to step through the aperture on the lens itself. If you don't want it to adjust in increments, you can actually do it smoothly by turning the click off right here and go all the way to f16 in a smooth manner when you take the aperture and you click it over to a i thought this meant auto which it could be if you set it up that way but what that really means is it treats your lens as if this ring isn't there and you can adjust it on your camera i'm not used to having an aperture ring so when i would go to switch my aperture just in my muscle memory i would have it right here and as you can see it's not adjusting on the camera. And I would have to remind myself like, oh, the aperture is on the actual lens itself. But after overcoming that learning curve, I actually like to keep the aperture on the lens itself more than in the A position. We do have the infinite focus ring here. So you can go as long or as short as you want to and just keep going for all the time. On this side of the lens, we have the focus hold button, which I just recorded a whole video about what this button does because I <laughs> didn't really know what it did until until recently, in your menu system, if you go to custom key, and on the very last page, it actually shows you right here on the lens, it's focus hold. So if I were to click that, you have 25 different pages of whatever you want to customize this button to. Another great feature of these higher end GM series lenses is the switch for autofocus and manual focus on the lens itself. If I had to do that in camera, I would be recording something and then I would have to hit my focus mode button, scroll down to manual focus, get my shot, and then hit my focus button again, scroll up to continuous autofocus, and then do everything that I needed to from there. So having it on the lens itself really helps out. The lens cap on this one does come with a locking mechanism, which took a little getting used to even now. So that's locked in there. It's not going anywhere. The lens itself is compact. It's, I mean, it's not a pancake lens, but if you've seen any of like Canon or Sigma's 24 millimeter prime lenses, those things are pretty big. This one's light and it's short in comparison to those other lenses. The 1.4 is a double-edged sword. It's a pro and sometimes a con. And let me explain. First of all, you can definitely get caught up in too much bokeh. I am so guilty of this that when I first got this lens, all I wanted to do was just like have this thing taped or glued to 1.4 because why would I ever shoot anything else? Well, it turns out if you're trying to shoot during the daytime, you're probably going to need to shoot at something other than 1.4 because it's just too fast, which leads me to my next point that if you are shooting with this lens outside, I think you should tack on the price of an ND filter. This one takes the 67 right here. For my video gigs where I was shooting outside, I would just have to crank the shutter in order to get the kind of exposure that I needed to film the shots, but it would have been awesome to have an ND filter to really accentuate the 1.4 with the proper motion going on on camera, but highly, highly suggest getting an ND filter with this thing. Now, when I was shooting inside and I had control over the light, I would have to readjust every single light that I set up and turn them down whenever I pulled out this lens because it was just too much light getting into the lens. Another weird thing that may happen is that there's so much crispy bokeh going on that it may look like you're on a green screen. So if you have too much separation between you and the background and it's like only a solid wall or there's not anything really between you and the background to give you the viewer a proper representation of what the field of view is, what ends up happening is it looks like you're on a green screen because you're so crisp in the foreground. It looks cool, but it also looks fake. Sometimes when I was filming, I had to actually adjust it up to a higher aperture because I didn't want it to look like I was filming on a green screen when I was there in whatever place it was. Now, when I was on set, 
I had the choice between a 24 to 70 2.8G master lens, the 16 to 35 f4, and this 24 millimeter 1.4. So in all honesty, I had three different versions of the 24 millimeter focal range on those lenses combined. And every single time I came to getting a shot when I was initially setting up, I just went to grab this lens because it's almost the perfect focal lens for a master shot. And if I needed to get any close-ups or inserts for this type of shoot, we had the time to take everything at a master angle that was wider. And then I would take this lens and get a little bit closer. Now I will say, it has a certain aesthetic when you do shoot like that. And I feel like if you watch a lot of B-roll YouTuber videos, this is the kind of lens that you'll see doing the like zoom type of transitions with the boom because it has that crisp, shallow depth of field. Right when I put this thing on, it just seemed like I was shooting one of those B-roll YouTube videos. It was nice to get those kind of shots, but you may need to vary it up with another kind of lens to get a different kind of compression. So for those instances, I would go in, get some insert shots with my 24 millimeter at that really shallow depth of field. But sometimes you're just filling the frame with something that's normally not like that huge in real life. So I would get out my 24 to 70 and maybe punch in so there was a little bit more compression on my shots instead of having this all up in the grill of whatever I was shooting. That being said, this thing was on my camera probably 95% of the time when I was doing my commercial work. It was perfect for everything in terms of let me get my master wide shot of whoever's talking on camera and whatever actions they're doing, 24 is perfect for that. And plus with the 1.4, I had the ability to really stop down and isolate whoever it was in focus while blurring out the background, or I could switch it to a different focal length and then get as much as I needed to in the focal plane. But because this lens is designed not to really have distortion on the sides and have an even crisp throughout the lens from the corners to the middle, uh, it does a great job of that. In terms of autofocus, this thing does a phenomenal job, especially if you have time to set up the shot and you maybe set up a specific zone. I didn't really have any trouble with it trying to find whatever it needed to within those specific zones. So if you know what you're doing with your autofocus, it will do its job the way that it's supposed to. You just have to be super careful if you are uh, on the fly shooting or if you don't have time to set up a shot and you just kind of put it on a stand and you start filming, like if you're a vlogger and you're at 1.4, if you're at wide autofocus, sometimes if it's going to focus on something else because it's at 1.4, it's really going to focus on something else. And it's not forgiving for your viewer if you are super out of focus. I was on camera with Noah Kagan and halfway through our talking head, the thing pulled focus to the microphone in front of us as opposed to pulling focus to us. And uh, I wish I would have seen it earlier so we had a whole like talking bit where it was out of focus. I could have alleviated that issue if I would have pulled focus with a zone to one of our faces, but I was on the fly and I didn't really know what we were gonna be doing. So I just like let it do its thing. So I highly have to caution you that it's great at pulling focus if you have time to set it up. And if you don't, maybe err on the side of not shooting 1.4, or if you do, if you're a vlogger, maybe put it on center focus and then always try and stay center frame so it does pick you up perfectly. When looking at the minimum focusing distance, you can see right here that the lens gets about half a hand away from the water bottle to just about a whole fist. And right here, I'm doing a test walking directly towards the camera with the autofocus in wide mode. Does it work? Does it not work? Should I walk backwards? Just gonna walk backwards. You can tell that it does a pretty good job of picking up my face throughout the whole clip and not getting confused by the contrast of the trees in the background. Because it is 1.4, it's amazing at night. I know Sony's are already good at low light performance in the first place. And if you add something like this, it just takes it to a completely another level. Like right there, it looks like the sun is right there, but it's actually like the sun's gone. The sun's, the sun's not here anymore. If you were on an F4 lens, this is what it would look like at this time. This is what you'd be working with at this time. So this is kind of what it normally looks like. In this situation, you'd have to boost your ISO up a bunch 
And since it's a Sony, it has awesome low light capabilities. So this is ISO 4000 right now. But why would you need F4 when you can go to F1.4? It look it literally looks like it's daytime. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, so here's me on camera at f1.4. Now here's me on camera at f4. And just for comparison, if you wanted to see f2.8, here's f2.8. Uh, all of this has been ISO 640, I believe. It is so cool that I can be here at night vlogging and you can just see me like it's daytime. My mind is blown. <laughs> I really enjoyed shooting with this because it, it does alleviate the amount of decisions you have to make in terms of composition. Because you're bound by one specific focal length of 24 millimeters, you end up composing your shots according to how you can fill the frame at that focal length. So instead of having the decision to punch into 70 millimeters or 24 millimeters on a 24 to 70 zoom lens, now you're just bound to 24 and you have to move yourself to compose your shots appropriately for that focal length. Which is part of the reason why people love shooting with prime lenses is because it makes you think differently about how you need to compose your shot. One thing this lens does not have is optic stabilization. And right now, just for the sake of this video, I have it connected to my Alpha 6400 because I'm shooting with my a7 III. I only ran into a couple instances where I put my 16 to 35 that does have OSS on it, just because I wanted to make sure that I had that extra stability in my shots for certain push-ins or pull-outs. But for the most part, in a controlled environment, if you have the ability to have this on a slider or a gimbal, whatever that may be because it is lightweight and it's a prime lens it's not going to be moving at all or none of the components are going to be moving in there it makes it a perfect candidate for those kind of shots and i use this for so many different slider shots and so many push-ins and pull-outs during these past couple weeks working with it another thing that i haven't really heard anybody talk about when you're shooting at 1.4 on a lens like this is the fact that for a shot like this you don't have to pick up your room as much because it's blurry in the background. So like right now I'm disguising the mess on my desk with these um, Sony bags. But if I were to move these, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on back there that you can't really see. I guess you could kind of see it. I just throw a whole bunch of stuff over there. And when you have something like the 1.4, you don't have to work as hard on the production end to make sure that you don't have a whole bunch of clutter in your background because it just puts it blurry in the background in the first place, which could be a huge time saver on set. Most of the time when you're shooting on set, you have to spend so much time getting rid of all of the things in the background to make it look nice and neat. And if you could set up your camera and maybe adjust a couple things as opposed to a whole room, I think more people should be talking about how that is a benefit of having a 1.4 on your lens, especially with video. The only major drawback that I see that's a barrier to entry for this lens is the price. It's $1,400 at the time of this upload. Honestly, I think it's worth that much money, especially when it comes to production. Because I had this thing on my camera most of the time, I can tell you that it helps save time shooting. Because of that 1.4, if you are strapped for cash and you don't have lights, or if you're in a scenario where you don't have lights or don't have access to good lights, that 1.4 could save you in post because you have access to all that light hitting your sensor. The other part of that is you don't have to get rid of as much clutter in the background because the 1.4 just blurs it out anyway. The only argument I could see to this being cheaper is that Sony released another G-Series lens that that's only like 890 bucks or like 900 bucks. That's the 20 millimeter prime. It's only 1.8, but if anybody is looking to buy this lens, they're also going to be looking at that 20 millimeter for video. If you're a photographer and you need the focal length of 24 millimeters, you're probably going to be looking at this lens specifically compared to the other zoom lenses or uh, prime lenses on the market by like Sigma. Those other lenses are cheaper, but I'm just talking about the Sony ecosystem system of everything that's been produced by the company Sony. And the fact that they have a close enough focal range of 20 millimeters at such a cheaper rate, 
that's the thing that I would be looking at if you were looking at another Sony lens. So in conclusion, the 1.4 is the, the best thing about this lens. It's so crisp, it's amazing but with great power comes great responsibility. So you have to be super diligent about your composition of your shots if you plan on really nailing the focus because it is such a shallow depth of field. Uh, just be weary and make sure that your autofocus zones are set up correctly that way the camera can do the best for you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Is this lens worth 1,400 bucks? Is it not? If you did like this video and the whole review process, could you give me a thumbs up on the video? And if you did like the style and you haven't subscribed, you can hit the subscribe button. Right now on the screen is a video that was algorithmically chosen just for you by the robots that are taking our jobs or my most recent video. You could click either of them and subscribe again if you wanted to. Until next video, my name's Javier Mercedes. I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.